Let's do a quick overview of the basic components we use in cockpit building. Make sure to also watch my other videos which show you how to use these components and also don't forget to like, subscribe and share with others in the flight sim community. Switches are probably the most used components and because it would take hours to cover the many types we will cover only the most basic and common ones. A single pole single throw switch has two connections and they are used to turn something on or off and only those two states. Here's an example of a panel in a King Air 350. When it comes to wiring, this switch will use up one digital pin or connection on your interface card. A single pole dual throw switch usually has three connectors and only provides the on function but does so for two separate connections. Here's an example. Ever notice a nav GPS switch in the cockpit? This switch allows you to change the source of your navigation. You can either use nav or GPS, but you must always be using one, and this function cannot be turned off. A variation of this switch allows for a center position that is off. When it comes to wiring, this switch will use two connections on your interface card. These basic switches come in many different shapes and sizes. For example, this is a Citation Mustang, but instead of toggle switches, these are changed to rocker switches on the Cirrus SR22. Rocker switches are also common for battery switches in smaller aircraft. For a landing gear, you will find a toggle switch with a safety mechanism to prevent you from lowering or raising the landing gear by accident. Please check out my video on building a landing gear which features this switch. For a parking brake, you can use a push-pull switch like the one you see here. I purchased this switch as well as the parking brake knob from Desktop Aviator. A switch that has a rotating mechanism and allows for several positions is known as a rotary switch. In pre-made simulator components, for example, you will find these in the Logitech panels. In a real aircraft, such as a Citation Mustang, you will see this type of switch in a test panel or fuel tank selector, which allows you to rotate the switch to the component you wish to test or use. When wiring these up, you will need multiple digital inputs into your interface card depending on how many positions the switch has. Now let's review push buttons. Just like switches, they come in a large variety and are one of the most used electrical components in a cockpit. You will find them in autopilot panels, radio panels, and basically all around. They usually use one digital pin when it comes to wiring. Just like switches, push buttons have different electrical configurations. You will see terms such as momentary, which means they switch to a different state temporarily when pressed. Here are some examples. These are momentary off-on buttons. This means that the electrical signal is always off, but when you press the button, it sends an on signal, then goes back to being off. They also exist as always being on, and the push action sets them to off. The action is referred to as open or closed. When the momentary component is removed, some push buttons will hold their action. For example, when I press this button, it stays on or latched, and will only switch off when I press it again. These are great for pausing the simulator. Once you are done, just press again to unpause and continue. You also have tactile push buttons that are used mostly in keypads, such as in the control display unit on the Citation CJ3, or the FMS keyboard on the Phenom 300, or the SR22. Finally, we move to components which are considered critical inside a cockpit, rotary encoders. These devices allow us to quickly change or swap values. A single encoder is used to change or sync one value such as heading, altitude, or course, as can be seen in this panel for the Citation CJ3 or the Cirrus SR22. A single encoder can use up to five digital connections for the rotary and push button functions. Dual rotary encoders are so important that I made a video just for them. They allow us to change two different sets of values and also have a push button for an additional function. In radio or navigation panels, they help us to adjust frequencies or swap them from one radio to the other. In avionics, they allow us to change settings, move from one page to the other, or input characters. The push button can be used to select a value. Dual rotary encoders can use up to four digital connections for the inner and outer knobs, and one connection for the push button. Potentiometers or POTS are another essential component. They are used for volume, dimming and brightening displays, trim wheels, throttles, flaps, spoilers, and a lot more. They are one of the few components that will be wired up to the analog pins instead of the digital on your interface cards. The most common are rotary and slide potentiometers used in throttles. 
I'm going to end this video with a component that has been gaining a lot of attention in both the real world of flying and flight simulation, touchscreens. Avionics such as the Garmin G3000 or Rockwell Collins Proline Fusion use touchscreens. You can purchase small and large touchscreens or just turn your old cell phone or tablet into one. Check out my video on using touchscreens in your simulator. If you had a component in mind and did not see it or have a question about this video, please comment below. A lot of people may find this information useful, so please share, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and Happy New Year.